when I do art, I do it because I need to do it. It's to express my feelings, it's a way to express my thoughts. It's a way to put all these emotions in an artwork. I was invited for the PhotoFest festival, it's in Texas. I got my appointment to get the visa from the consulate. Sorry sir, you're Syrian, I can't give you the visa. And I was like, do you want to know what I do or do you want to see the invitation? He didn't bother to see anything. He was like, no, I can't give you the visa. I know there's some people, they may hate me just because of my race or because my country, where I come from. I'm proud of my background. I'm proud, I'm from Syria, I'm proud of everything. But at the end of the day, I don't, I don't feel like I'm Syrian now. It's like when you kiss someone you love and you know that it's the last time you're gonna see him or see her. And in my life, I try to be positive all the time. That's how I survived the last five years after war. I try to see the, the light, the spotlight in the dark. The war broke out in my city in Aleppo in 2012. I was like just surfing online and the news of Syria along with the Pokemon Go game back then it was all Syria Aleppo Pokemon, Syria Aleppo Pokemon. I put the characters of the Pokemon inside like scenes from Aleppo and I posted online. An hour later people they're retweeting, talking about it and it went viral all around the world. I got messages from all over the world. We are sorry we never, we never paid attention to what's going on in your country and thank you for showing us. That's exactly the role of any art. And then I lost a dear friend. She's an animal activist. She's a vet, she was in Syria, and then people, they left the country and they put their pets with her. She ended up with 12 dogs. She refused to leave them. She's, she was like, I'm not leaving behind 12 dogs to die. I'll remain in Syria and I will take care of them. I remember that day when I called her and someone answered, they say she was shot yesterday, executed. And I met an artist, a performance artist, and he's Sufi, he's like, he prays through his dance. And I was like, what about we have a pray for her? I was like, yeah, but I want an animal. I want you to dance with the dove. Then after a few days, he said, guess what? I find a white dove. Let's do it. It was so spiritual, that moment. It was amazing. It took me a year working on this project. My dad is an artist. He's a fine art artist. He paints. My grandpa is a judge, and I wanted to be like him. But I also lived in a house where Art is everything. After studying law and political sciences, I, I decided to just do art, not practice law, because I felt it's, it's more me. My great grandpa is, uh, his name uh, Abdurrahman al-Kawakibi. He's an author, he's a thinker in Arab world. He's, he's pretty famous in his bold statements back then during the Ottoman Empire. For me, like, to be the grandson of this important figure, it's, it's also like, uh, to push me more to work, you feel like you have a duty. Like you have a duty to, to deliver a message. It's like a mission, it's like a life mission to do it.